want to make sure that I acknowledge the sponsor of the show, Teach Henley, because Teach Henley sent me this new pack. They sent me the new Teach pack, so I just literally pulled the paper out, got it out of the mail, and I started going through it, and I got a little bit more excited than I should. You know what I'm saying? So they did send me the Teach pack, and I don't even know what this is yet. So I'm assuming this is what you get when you first uh, order your Teach, and I don't know what this is. Oh, this is dope. This is absolutely dope. Is this a nail kit? Ladies, get this for the fellas. Fellas, don't wait for the ladies to get it for you. This is free. This just comes with it. 30% off your first order, plus 20% off for life. Literally. Oh, snaps. I didn't know that they were sending it like this. Real talk. So this is the nail kit that they sending you. All right. So now you ain't looking like a dusty dusty. This is a free gift straight from Teach. For the people that ordered the teas, they got the small one for the little hands like mine's. They got the big joints for your toenails. And then uh, they got the joints at the bottom too. You know what I'm saying? For y'all, that's a little bit more crustier than usual. All right. So that's one of the free gifts that Teej got inside of the pack. And then uh, what is this? It says squeeze a quarter size amount of Teej Hanley body wash on the center of the wet bristles. Lather, scrub, rinse, and repeat for the perfectly satisfying wash every time. So that's inside of there also, right? Ooh, I can get my rubber ducky on right here. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Teej for sending me that uncomplicated skincare for men. And then uh, what we got in here? We got the actual Teej pack, right? So this is the normal Teej pack, but then they gave me the super size joint for the people. They wanted me to show the people exactly what they got when they ordered that that first teach pack when you're getting your 30% off your first order and then you get your free gifts you get two free gifts and then the 20% off for life so the 20% off for life is a new thing and um man I ain't even got my keys on me to open this up maybe I can use the the little nail clipper thing I ain't gotta buy no nail clipper for my new joint downtown And then you get all of the all of the washes, all of the scrubs, all of the AM, the PMs, and all of that stuff. So you got the whole thing inside of there for you to make sure you take care of yourself. But you got to make sure you take care of it every day, right? We don't want to miss days. We don't want to be looking like dusty dusties. It does not absolve you from being able to make sure that you brush your teeth. Brush your teeth. It don't fix the teeth problem. Don't fix you ironing your clothes. Don't fix you being able to take care of your business. But it absolutely makes sure that your skin is phenomenal. Even when you're going between shaves, you know what I'm saying? So shout out to Teach Henley. We absolutely appreciate you. Thank you for continuing to hold us down. Uh, I might do an official Teach commercial, but I like just talking authentically to the people. I like giving the people the authentic look of what it is that you're dealing with, and I want you to hear from me personally. Because anybody can do that little pitch, and they can make some little videos, but very few of us can actually speak to the products uh, of exactly what it is that you're supposed to use. So, yeah, Teach Henley. 30% off your, your first order and then 20% off for life. That's the Anton Daniels pack. 20% off for life. Using any other Teach pack, make sure that you go ahead and let that go. Um, and make sure you tap into the link. It's in the description and take care of it. All right? What's going on is Anton from AntonDaniels.com. I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with me. Thank you for tuning in for another edition of the Millionaire Morning Show. I am your host, Anton Daniels, and it is April 16th, 2024, year of our Lord. <laughs> what up, what up, what up, what up, what up to all of my friends and my family out here in the building making sure that we run it up, get to the bag. Did y'all enjoy the show last night? I thought that it was a phenomenal show last night. What up, friends and family? How y'all feel? Let me get one word in the chat to see how y'all feeling today. Let me get just one, just one. I know who my people are. 
One thing about my people is that they show up. But the other thing about them is that they don't want to just put one word in the chat. And then and, and on top of that, on top of that, they don't hit a like for the algorithm. So we all right with that. What up to all of my friends and family? What's happening? I know y'all enjoyed the show last night. Let me get y'all up on the big screen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Show was crazy, determined, blessed, productive, eager, grateful, wilding, focused, hype, awesome, jazz, working, ready, renewed, stress, rejuvenated, sleepy, blessed, grinding, um, inspired. I like that. Jazz is the new word. Preach the truth. Always the back chasers, learning, exhausting, sturdy. Hustling, fresh, inspired, faithful, blessed, hello, um, determined, love, blessed, jazz, jazz y'all keep saying that, okay, groovy, fortunate, jazzed, fantastic, blessed, blessed, feeling great, show was crazy last night, fruitful, full, ready, Q had to catch a flight this morning too, shout out to my girl Q, ready to hear the truth, cooling, blissful, working so I don't have to later, grateful, determined for change, all right, last night had y'all dying laughing. Amazing, amazing. Focus, lavish, responsible, finally free, cooking for real, for real, for real. What up? What up, Anike? Says you're responsible, thankful, great. Last night, last night's show was great. You showed Jazz Grace. Exactly, thankful. People don't even know who I used to be. Thankful, um, tested, tested. We all tested. You're going to get there. You gonna get there. What up, what up, what up to all of my friends and family? How y'all doing this morning? Yeah, I need to start wearing the black uh, undershirt instead of the gray because the gray starting to show up. Smoke, groovy, purposeful. Show was definitely lit last night, chilling. Hey, can we get a round of applause for Q for putting on one of the best shows on earth? Yeah, evolving, evolving, evolving. Okay, I like that. Hey, Anton, is it true that Rico Wade from Organized Noise died? I don't know, but we can talk about it on After Hours tonight. Are y'all not tapping into After Hours tonight? Yeah, we got After Hours popping off tonight. So that should be fun. And we're going to have some exciting times and good energy. One thing that y'all can't say, and two things is for certain is, certain, is that we don't keep the energy up. We don't keep the entertainment popping. And we don't make sure that y'all have an absolutely hoot of a good time on a regular basis. And so I'm very, very thankful for you guys for tapping in all the time to make sure that we doing what we do. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get to it. So first and foremost, uh, we want to give a sponsor to the show, Tej Henley. Shout out to Tej Henley. 30% off your first order plus 20% off your, your lifetime subscription of Tej Henley. If y'all have not got Tej Henley, the link is in the description. Also, on top of that. Yeah, I guess Rico did pass. I'm going to go ahead and look into that. Uh, also, on top of that, if y'all have not, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Uh, I am updating some of the videos. So, in addition to uh, releasing a new video soon, I'm also updating some of the videos that I did in the past so that it could just be more modern to make sure that everything stays up to date. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to y'all. Shout out to all of the people that's tapped into me. And it said, Anton, are you trying a new camera angle? Eh, eh, I'm testing some stuff out. I'm always playing around with things to see what was going on. Hey, I replied or I said something on a, a Instagram post. I just put a little comment. It was a lady on there and she was like, oh, yeah, I got rid of my apartment. So now I live in my car. And there was people walking past her in the background and stuff. And she was like, I'm living my car so that I can travel and do what I want to do. And I was like, oh, OK, so you homeless. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's the video that I'm dropping, Adrian, soon. I'm like, pe people was all up in, no, she's not homeless. She's removed herself from her house by choice. So you homeless. Right? So you homeless. I'm going to read Super Chat shortly. Ain't that what it mean if you don't have a home that you homeless? It's almost like when people say that they single by choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm single by choice. Oh, so you, so you single. 
So you don't have a man. Oh, you homeless. And people start now, you know how people do. Christ was homeless. That's what I'm getting the notifications for. I can't believe you, Anton, and all of this. I'm like, are we going to tell the truth and shame the devil, or are we going to get unhoused? Is that what y'all prefer, unhoused? <laughs> we need to go back to arranged marriages. We genuinely do. I'm going to bring that up. We're going to talk about that on After Hours today. I got so many things that's on my mind. And shout out to everybody that's out here stealing content. Man, people have no um, content of their own, and it's wild. But we do have a full show, as usual, for you guys. So I hope y'all buckled up and y'all ready to get it popping. And so, again, make sure that y'all <laughs> – right, Vanessa. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Let me read a couple Super Chats, Cash Apps, and then we're going to get it popping from there. Uh, first and foremost, I want to give a shout out to my dog. Larry Walker says, last night's show was awesome. 2K is a mess. Y'all saying we got to go ahead and give 2K that 360 contract? 2K is a stubborn son of a dude. You know what I'm saying? My dog, J. Ben, says, hyena free morning, bag chasers, protect your peace. That's a fact, though. I want to give a shout out to my dog, Michael, on Cash App also. Thank you, my friend, for always holding me down. And then also, in addition to that, I want to give a shout out to Mike, that dude. <laughs> Always pouring into and, see, and seeing that we taking care of. And I also want to give a shout out to the chat. I want to give a shout out to all of y'all that's out here running it up. I want to give a shout out to the people that's getting to the bag, people that are successful, everybody that's doing phenomenal things. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all for always loving on me. I love you back. I love you back, all right? Let's go ahead and get into it, y'all. We're going to try to keep it within two hours. We're going to try to be a little bit more stern on our time. That way we can get our $30 million contract, right? No? All right, let's go get that $30 million. Quick Hits, y'all. Quick Hits is a segment of the show that we don't necessarily think that we need to talk about everything in its own individual se segment, but we definitely want to keep you guys informed on what's happening out here in these streets. Man, I love you too, K. Cooper. I love you too, K. Cooper. All right, let's go ahead and get into Quick Hits, y'all. So, first and foremost on Quick Hits, Miami. I don't really get a you know, chance to talk about his Miami as much. Thank you to Omega Jack. I don't get a chance to talk about Miami as much, but Miami, there was a triple shooting at a gas station last night. Check it out. Details tonight. Miami police have announced a man is in custody in connection to the deadly triple shooting that left two employees dead at a Miami gas station this morning. CBS News Miami's Nakaya Carrero has more on what we've learned within the last hour. Two men are dead and one is here at Ryder Trauma Center fighting for his life after a shooting at a Miami gas station. The suspect found by SWAT team across the street in an apartment building. We got a total of three victims, two inside and one outside. Victims and looks like two men will be 45, the other one is still alive. What you just heard is a city of Miami police officer who arrived to the Chevron gas station on Northwest 54th Street and 17th Avenue, responding to a call for three men shot. The shooter, nowhere to be found. White Hispanic male, black long hair with a black hoodie, with white lettering on, on the hoodie that possibly says the word power on it. Uh, he's got a like handlebar mustache. City of Miami police said the shooting took place around 12.30 a.m. It started with an argument inside the gas station. That's when the suspect shot the two employees and then shot the third man before running off. Customers say the two victims were sunny and moon to everybody. What is this world coming to, man? These guys, I haven't seen them do nothing but help people. I mean, people come in there, sure, don't have money. They feed them, give them coffee. They give me free coffee every day, you know? Um, I've been crying all afternoon. One of them was I was close to. As the gas station remains roped off with crime scene tape, officers and a SWAT team move in on the apartment building across the street. A million cars, tanks, and 
about 10 minutes later, I saw them, about five or six cops, putting him in the back of the car. Officers eventually bringing a man out in handcuffs seen in this video. And as police continue their investigation, people in the area say this shooting hits close to home. Moon is sunny. The two of the best people in this area. There ain't too many nice people in the world today, but these guys are really nice, man, and they didn't deserve it. The city of Miami Police Department continues to investigate the shooting and the circumstances leading up to it. Imagine being a person that's a pillar for the community and that your business is not just the business uh, that people come to to patronize, but also a business that, you know, knows its customers, gives back to its community. When people need something, they go ahead and give it to them for free. Imagine being that. And then, again, you open up a business in a neighborhood, and then one person come in, get into an argument, and next thing you know, they shooting everybody. And that's the end of the conversation. That's the end of the story. Imagine being that person. <sighs> I'm telling y'all, it does not pay. I know y'all be wanting to go back to the hood. You want to open up businesses. Man, listen, bro. I'm telling you. I remember when I first got into real estate, it was my first, first come to Jesus aha moment. And uh, I had got a couple properties and it was successful. And I said, you know what? I want to go back and build into my community and stuff. And so we went and we bought a couple houses over there and we were starting to rehab them. And uh, the first thing that happened, the first night that we got something valuable in there, so we locked it up really tight and we did the things and all of that. And then we wind up coming back the next morning and everything was stolen. We said, nah, this is not it. This is not it. Nah, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it because it's not going to be conducive for us. So we're going to go ahead and walk away from that situation. We just took our L's, learned our lesson, made the adjustment, and continued to invest in the things that made the most sense. So, unfortunate for the people over there in Miami, unfortunate for the people that it happened to, uh, we praying for the families as usual. And I don't care who you are. I don't care what your background is. Nobody deserves to be shot, handled. And let me also say this, and I've been saying this for a long time, and I know a lot of y'all that's not resonate with y'all, but let me also say this for, for, for y'all. For my people, that's so tough. I know y'all the toughest people in the world. I know you ready to stand on yours. You got to make sure that you demand your respect from people. Your job is to get home. Shout out to McCole's Wellness and Motion. I'm going to read that super chat shortly. Y'all job, let me tell you what your job is as a man. Your job as a man is to not leave your wife as a widow and as your kid, your kid being left without a father. Your job every single day, before we get into this next story, your job every day as a man is to get home safely to your family. I know everybody want to be tough. I know y'all standing on principles and tough talk, and y'all going to stomp the yard. Your job as a man is to get home safely to your family. It's okay to walk away. It's okay, okay not to go to jail. It's okay not to crash out. It's okay not to be all in other people's stuff and finding yourself under duress or arrested or fighting a case and you got to use your whole family's life savings and your daughter's and your son's college tuition to fight a case just because you standing on business for a bunch of people on the internet that don't care nothing about you. Your job every day is to get home safely and make sure that your family is taken care of. Ain't nobody going to be checking, to, checking for you when you all gone because they're going to read your obituary. They're going to talk about your story. Your chick's still going to be widowed and your daughter and your sons is going to not have a father. And they, people going to go on and they're going to move on with, uh, after their life after they tell you you're a real one. That's your job. Also in quick hits, Chicago, remember when we was talking about that $70 million that Brandon Johnson in Chicago was advocating for for migrants, even though we was getting rid of shot spotter and all of that stuff? Chicago, all of their aldermen and the mayor and everything, they got that approved. They got their $70 million for more for migrants on top of what they was already getting and what they budgeted for. They got their $70 million. Check it out. 
The Finance Committee approved another $70 million to spend on supporting migrants. But there was some reluctance. Some council members say that the city is not spending money on its own residents who are also in need. Chicagoans had to give up park district facilities to house the new arrivals in Chicago. The city reports all of the park district field houses have been cleared and returned to the neighborhoods. But money is still needed for migrant care. And with the Democratic National Convention coming up, there could be more migrants dispatched to the city. Alder persons approve the money, but they want something in return. And when we talk about this money, and, and as important as our children are to us, as important as a place like Ogden Park, the field house is to, to the Inglewood community where shootings take place, where every economic indicator, health indicator, everything, everybody should be jumping at that to protect our children and give us the things that we need. If we're going to be asked to approve this kind of supplemental funding, uh, we absolutely, on behalf of our constituents have to have transparency around how these funds are being spent. The city is expecting the state and federal government to help out, but one council member said that the federal government's action so far is to do nothing. The full city council will have to approve this measure. Joni Lum, Fox 30. So, like I said, I was keeping y'all up to date and I told y'all that I was going to keep uh, on top of making sure that y'all knew what was going to happen as far as them going after and trying to make sure that they get this $70 million for the migrants and they fight for this money. They budget for it, they cut services, they go into debt for it, they pass millages. They gonna get that money, but when it come to y'all safety and putting more officers on the streets and giving them raises and promotions and making sure a shot spotted and a crime prevention and more cameras and better public safety and all of the stuff for the people so that you can then lower crime and raise property values and actually add value into people's lives, we're not going to talk about that part. So that's what's happening over in Chicago. And then last but not least, uh, the Hudson site. So a lot of people are not familiar with what's going on here in Detroit. But uh, the Hudson site is the site that I was actually going to move into. So it's a new high rise with retail and office space and corporate office space um, here in downtown Detroit. And it's the, now the second tallest building uh, in Michigan. And so it's being built by Dan Gilbert from Bedrock and Quicken Loans, who also owns the Cavaliers and who also has headquarters for Rocket Mortgage and Quicken Loans and all of those companies and the Bedrock uh, family of companies here in Michigan. And there's been a lot of building, a lot of skyscrapers. Ford is re rebuilding uh, the Michigan train uh, station and Central Depot. Uh, the Hudson site is built. But now General Motors is moving their headquarters from another building here in downtown or here near downtown over into the Hudson site. And then there's uh, some questions about redevelopment of that particular building in particular. Uh, well, wait a minute, what is this one? I got the wrong story up here. Oh man, that's not the story that I meant to do. Hold on, hold on, I gotta make sure I got the right. That's not the story that I meant to do. This, that was a story that I went away from. <laughs> hold on, give me a second. I got away from that story. <sighs> Give me a second. Let me see if I can get that in there for y'all. I don't know if I'll be able to get it up right away. But that story was a little bit more tragic. So let me get away from that one and see if I can get this one. Yeah, I figured that was going to happen. Hold on one second. I thought I had already saw for that. Drone 4 showing you General Motors' current home, the iconic Renaissance Center. But in the background, their future headquarters, now called Hudson's Detroit. Thanks for being here with us for the News at 6. I'm Kimberly Gill. And I'm Demond Fernandez in for Devin Skillian. In one simple move few saw coming, General Motors agrees to move out of the Rensen and to a brand new spot right around the corner. Yeah, this is big news. This all, of course, raises all sorts of questions about the future of the building, which has stood as the defining structure of Detroit's sky. <laughs> Why is everybody asking me what was the original video? Okay, so the original video was uh, a man that was basically being sentenced because... He didn't want to pay child support, and so what he did was he had put antifreeze 
inside of his baby's baby bottle. But the baby survived. The man was sentenced to 50 years. And he had a good job. And people wasn't was trying to understand, why would he want to try to kill his kid because he didn't want to pay child support? That was the original story. But, you know, I got so tired of all of these dark stories because we already got enough people that we need to bring to the front of the congregation today. And so as a result, I decided to go away from that, go into a more of a business story to make sure that we keep it even and balanced and we want to talk about the news, but we also want to talk about the money. All right. So that was the original story. I decided not to go with that story. For some reason, I didn't update the video. But so, yeah, he didn't want to pay child support, so he put antifreeze in his baby stuff, and he got 50 years in prison. But anyways, let's get back to this. My line, since construction was completed back in 1976, business editor Rod Maloney live to break down what came out of a joint news conference between GM and Bedrock. Rod. Well, Kimberly, you know, this was uh, as stunning as it was back in 1996. I was there when GM announced that they were going to buy the Rensen for $75 million. They've since put a billion dollars into it, but it's a tough building. It's always been difficult for them. And now this seems to make as much sense as buying the Rensen did back 28 years ago. So let's talk about that a little bit. General Motors now only has about 2,500 employees downtown after COVID, much of the operation moved to the tech center up in Warren. And apparently Dan Gilbert has long had this idea as he built his massive tower here downtown of moving GM into the office tower, which sits in front here. Today, I could not be more pleased to welcome General Motors to Hudson's Detroit. Dan Gilbert made his staff even more delible on Detroit's landscape, GM foregoing its longtime headquarters on the river and moving into the newly named Hudson's Detroit building, the new GM logo shown in a video screen for the first time here. Mary Barra saying it's a full circle move. And this is our fourth headquarters here, starting with the very first one on Woodward between Fort and Congress. Mayor Mike Duggan saying Dan Gilbert first pitched him on this idea six years ago. And I said, Dan, they haven't been in the Renaissance Center that long. Are they even looking for a new headquarters? He says, no, nah, they don't realize they need one yet. Uh, he says, but I'm going to pitch them. Now, stepping back and looking at this major Detroit business shift is longtime Detroit real estate analyst and retail specialist, Jim Beery. He leased the retail operation inside the Rensen before GM bought it and says it's actually a good thing Bedrock will now do the heavy lifting of repurposing the Rensen. They'll be able to do some things with that building that General Motors wouldn't because General Motors is not, uh, their DNA is not made up to operate a multi-story built, multi-discipline multi building. And rather than look at the tall hill to climb to give the Rensen relevance again, Bieri sees it as most entrepreneurs do. And this is a kind of a space that could attract something we can't think of. And so maybe there's an opportunity from that perspective. So a lot of people don't realize, so. Well, it attract something really we quick. can't think of. So if you see it, if you look over into the right, where it looks like it's a building over there on, in construction, that's the new building. So to the left, you see the water. That's the Detroit River. The Detroit River actually divides Canada and Detroit. So a lot of people actually go over to Canada for the daytime, or it's a lot of Canadians that comes over into the city and works in a city, and then they go back to Canada. Or a lot of them actually, I've been meeting a lot of them on a people mover. A lot of people has actually been moving over from Windsor in Canada over into the city. That's the GM Renaissance building. Bedrock Detroit is now going to repo repurpose um, this whole entire building. I'm not sure what the plan is for it. Uh, I've personally made some phone calls to people that is a part of Bedrock, and hopefully I can get some insight and um, I can get some you know, understanding as to what is going to happen. But all of this is redeveloped completely, is redeveloped completely. When y'all see me live streaming at night on Wednesday and you see my background and you see the GM Renaissance Center, that's what you're looking at right there. When y'all see the water, then y'all see the water and the Detroit River. And then it's a river walk that runs all the way from down at my building, all the way down to Belle Isle, which is its own island and stuff like that. So the building that's all the way in the distance on the right hand side is actually the new building, the new Hudson's building that's being built. And it's also going to be not only GM's headquarters, but it's going to be um, a lot of retail space. It's going to be a hotel and it's going to be residences. So I had planned to originally move into a penthouse that was in a new building. It's now housing GM. 
But instead, I decided to move to the other building because I felt like the views was better. I could see the water more and I could see more of the city. So this is part of what I'll be talking about as far as the evolution of the city and what is becoming. It's a lot of billionaires in the city that's rebuilding it, including the Illich companies that own Little Caesars Pizza and Comerica Park. And then you got the Ford companies that's, that's owning a Ford Field and that's directly across the street from Comerica Park. And then they rebuild in a train station, which actually opens this year. And then on top of that, you got GM continuing to recertify themselves as a part of the fabric of Detroit. And then Dan Gilbert and Quicken Loans, uh, they've moved all of their employees down into the city from other parts of the country and from the suburbs. And so the city is actually going up in a lot of value and there's so many opportunities and so much money to be made. And a lot of people don't understand it. And all the time I keep telling y'all, y'all miss it. By the time you catch it, it's going to be too late. By the time you catch it, listen, the people that make the most money are the buyers. It's not the me tours, it's the buyers. But let me play a little bit more of this and then we're going to get over into the next part of the show. And so maybe there's a opportunity from that perspective. Now that is the optimistic vision for the Ren Sen. There are a lot and if of you look at all of that construction in the back and it's a lot of people walking, uh, it's because the NFL draft is coming in a couple weeks and so they blocking off all of the traffic and setting stuff. And then that's the uh, Shinola Hotel that's directly across the street from the New Hudson Center. So, What in the heck Dan Gilbert is going to be able to do with it? They, they talk about maybe putting some housing in that, but getting uh, plumbing up and down in that building has long been an issue. So it's a problem. And the question of whether they can actually salvage it um, or will it become a largely vacant place that very few people can really make it around and navigate inside, we'll have to see. But Dan Gilbert and his team have taken that job on. And as I talked to Sandy Baru, the head of the uh, Chamber of Commerce, the other day, he says, I don't bet against Dan Gilbert. So we'll see what they yeah. do. Yeah. Back to you. Uh, Rod, I know you said GM only has about 12, 2,500 people working in the Rensen building. Mm -hmm. How long do you think it'll take for GM to move those employees from there to the, the New Hudson's mm -hmm. Detroit building? Right. They have not given us specifics yet, but the building isn't finished. So they got to finish it first. Sure. They just topped it off last week. Um, and that's the for the big tower for the office building. It's going to take some time. So they're saying probably 2025. We're not sure. So it's a lot of development. I'm very excited to be a part of the fabric of the city. Um, and the fact that everything continues to grow and things continue to evolve. I see so many people moving in. It's a lot of people moving inside of my building. Uh, it's some people that I met that's a couple of people that I met that's famous that I'm not going to say because, you know, they want to make sure that they stay low key. Um, but Dion Sardines, we're not talking about that. So it's a lot going on and I'm very excited to be a part of it. But ladies and gentlemen, that's a part of your quick hits. All right. Let me read a couple more super chats and then we're going to go ahead and get it popping for the show. Omega Jack says great show last night. Thank you, Omega Jack. I appreciate you for holding me now. Oh my God, look at McCall. Look at McCall. Always love, appreciate, and a very blessed for your for the content you provide in the morning show. Apologies, I missed your birthday. You ain't gotta apologize. I love you. I love you, girl. Shout out to you. Um happy, happy, blessed, belated, and many more for your information. You know you have to celebrate the whole month. That's how I do. <laughs> I don't be understanding how, how women celebrate the whole month. I just be like, hey, let's celebrate my birthday today. And let's keep it moving. Shout out to Messi. Shout out to McCole again. I appreciate you, love. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, More Than Mello has a question. More Than Mello says, hey, Anton, while studying and grinding, did Rita ever express or argue with you uh, about feeling lonely? I do 60-hour weeks. Uh, while in school for computer science and my girlfriend of five years feel I'm going to abandon her. Any advice? So I wouldn't say that Rita ever felt lonely. I would say that the biggest thing that you got to understand is that communication is key. If you just grinding, if you just pushing and, you know, they don't understand the vision, it's difficult for them to be able to buy in. A lot of people don't understand that, uh, don't understand that relationships are interconnected. One of the problems, this is very difficult for me to even speak to this because you're saying that it's just your girlfriend. And if she don't feel like she your wife, she automatically don't feel like she got as much stake in this. And so it's very difficult for her to be able to buy into the vision. I was able to easily sell Rita continuously on the vision because I kept her informed and I kept her involved. 
You see what I'm saying? And so when they participate in, in your greatness, they're more willing to buy in because they understand that this is something that y'all are doing together. And so my greatness ultimately becomes your greatness. And then ultimately you are the one that benefit as a result of what it, what it is that I'm building, right? And so for me, it's always been all or nothing. We gonna either go and we gonna win all together or we gonna lose everything together and we just gonna crash out. And so as long as I communicated and I always said, hey, listen, I'm doing this for us or this is the vision that I have. Look how much progress that we have. Y'all have to communicate. Can't just say, hey, I'm grinding, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And if she not a wife, then I don't necessarily blame her for feeling like you're going to leave her because you have no reason to stay after you become great. I've already seen a video and I already did a review of a video where a guy, not a review of a video, but a guy called in the after hours. He was like, yeah, man, you know, my girl held me down when I ain't had nothing that she took care of me for the first four years that we was together. But I had to leave her because she wasn't on my program once I became and got money. I mean, I'm, I'm going to just be real with you. Dudes do that. Guys do do that. Like, they come up, and they be like, oh, man, she not what I thought she was. It's like, I got a, I got a level of loyalty that I just have, and I don't leave people behind. I don't leave people behind. And so, you know, the people that was there with me when I was building it, those are the people that I trust the most, and so those are the people that I rock with. So if you want her buy-in, then you know what you got to do. I'm not even really sure that I have to say it. If you want her full buy-in and you don't want her to feel a certain way, then you gotta, you know what you got to do, all right? Otherwise, I wouldn't be promising her something that you... We got to make sure that we keep our word. We have to make sure that we keep our word. If we going to promise something, if we going to go in this direction, if you want people to buy in to what you're doing, then you got to deliver and you got to keep your word. You can't ask somebody to make the sacrifice, but then at the same time, you're not giving them what it is that they need to be able to endure. Because people will endure. They'll suffer with you. They'll roll with you. They'll be in the mud with you. But you got to give them a reason to buy in. And you got to be a man of your word. And you got to be consistent. If you don't have that, and if you're not willing to rock out with people, that's why I got such a, a loyal group of people that not only rock with me, make sure y'all tap into the Patreon, but also because everybody that work for me, everybody that work with me, they don't trade, they don't trade up on me. They roll with me for a long time because I hold people down. All right. So that's a good question. But hopefully you got some insight from that. Let me also highlight something really quickly because a, a young person sent this to me. Uh, his name is Matthew. He's a junior in high school at a gifted and talented school. He is already an enrolled in a college. And he sells hoodies, T-shirts, and sweatshirts and sweats. The name of the site is called Hairloom NY. H-E-I-R-L-O-O-M-N-Y. Hairloom. H-E-I-R-L-O-O-M-N-Y. Hairloomny.com. And this is what it, I actually was riding this. I had this on when I was riding over to, I don't get anything from this, so I'm just highlighting it. I thought that it was pretty dope. And it's pretty sweet. So I was riding this on my way into the studio today because I rode my bike here today. And this is what it looks like. All right, it's dope. I, it's really, really high quality. You see the word, you see how I say Air, heirloom NYC? It's heirloomny.com. Heirloom NY, or maybe it's heirloom, heirloom NYC. That's what I'm reading on my text messages because Rita just sent it to me. Heirloomny.com. And uh, it's dope. It's dope. So it's a dope hoodie. I just wanted to make sure that I acknowledge that. Uh, after the show, I'm going to try to put the link in the description for if you guys want to go over there and support him. Again, it's a high school student and uh, really gifted. He's already in enrolled in college. He sells hoodies, T-shirts, and sweats. Uh, if you guys are interested, make sure y'all go over there and check it out. Um, it's dope. So if, if any of the moderators could actually put his stuff inside of the chat, Thank you, Osriel. Um, thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. So, again, I just wanted to make sure that I highlighted y'all. Anybody that sends me stuff, Cartez Cookie sent me some stuff. I want to go over that tomorrow. I always want to highlight young entrepreneurs or the people that are supporting. And if y'all are bag chasers, 
Let me know that y'all bag chasers when y'all send me this stuff so I can highlight y'all and I can give y'all some visibility, all right? Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. All right, let's continue over with the show. So, the name of the show today is Nasty Teachers. Now, why would I name this show Nasty Teachers? For a long time now, we've always known that men have always been held accountable for their actions. Meaning that I don't agree with the most of the stuff that we see happening. I absolutely hate when I see older, older, older men talking to younger, younger, like they just skirting the, skirting the curb when it comes to the women that they talking to. All right? Can't stand it. But I've been seeing way more, way more women getting arrested, being brought to the front of the congregation, finding themselves getting busting down young guys and so we got a a a few different stories that we got to go because it was all coming to me at the same time and i said what trafficking talking to young bulls i mean i don't know how many different stories that i've done with these older women getting involved with these young guys it's a lot it's a lot so we want to bring them to the front of the congregation today and we're going to start with this young woman, all right? And she's charged not only with being with a young guy, but she also let him use her gun for a drive-by shooting. You can't make this up. Don't sit here and tell me that y'all the prize, that y'all got all of these high standards. When you so desperate that you talking to a young bull and you letting him use your gun in a drive-by shooting, Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Let's get into it. Big story at six, a woman who worked in a Milwaukee public school is accused of having an intimate relationship with a 16-year-old student and letting him use her gun in a drive-by shooting. 12 News' Saria Salen is live at Milwaukee County Jail tonight where 30-year-old Oshai Williams is being held on several charges. Saria investigators say the student told them this relationship went on for months. Kristen Patrick, according to the criminal complaint, Williams met the 16 year old student at Marshall High School. He says she taught him Spanish. They started hanging out after school and one thing led to another. Investigators say this woman, 30 year old Oshai Williams, worked here at Marshall High School where she met a 16 year old boy and they became romantically involved. According to the criminal complaint, investigators discovered the relationship while investigating a drive-by shooting on February 1st at 27th an hour. The investigators discovered the relationship. Think about this for a second. It never would have been uncovered. It never would have been brought to the front of the congregation had investigators not been investigating a drive-by shooting. But you got to hear the rest, y'all. This is this is real. This is not made up. This is a real thing. Listen. We went to Checkers, got something to eat. Then shots just came out of nowhere. It just would not stop. It was just going all through my house. Like I had to get on top of my kids. In the, the woman who lived in that home, too shaken up to go on camera, she still does not know why someone randomly fired into her house. You've never heard of these people? Never in my life. Never. According to the criminal complaint, Williams told Milwaukee police the 16-year-old boy got a phone call she thought was a taunt about shots being fired into her own home a few days earlier. The boy told her to drive to 28th an hour. When they got there, he pulled her loaded Glock out of her purse and started shooting out the passenger window. Then it finally stopped. God gave me strength to run outside to say stop. Wrong house or what? During that investigation, a Bureau of Child Welfare official interviewed the 16 year old. He told them he and William started hanging out after school at her house. He said the relationship turned intimate and they had been dating several months. And Saria, how is the district responding tonight? Kristen MPS tells me she was never an employee of the Milwaukee Public School District. She was a contract worker on the MPS website. She is still listed as an elevated Spanish classroom coach at Marshall High School. All right, Saria Sandlin reporting live in Milwaukee. Thank you. So imagine this, y'all. Imagine this. 
Not only is she in an intimate relationship with a 16-year-old boy, the boy takes a pistol, grabs it out of her purse, start firing shots at the wrong house. The lady had to come out and say, hey, 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 you got the wrong house. First of all, you got some balls on you to go outside when somebody is shooting into your crib. Secondly, you shooting at the wrong house. And then third, you shooting at the wrong house with the wrong gun from a teacher that you shouldn't even be with in the first place. And then when they took him down, he was like, hey, listen, I'm going to tell you everything. I'm going to tell you everything. This is what happened. She was teaching me Spanish. Oh, no hablo espanol. And uh, mi amore. Oscuroquita. Buenos años. Si, en Apocani. Ah, mi amor. Escunistane. We got a little sticky sticky. Yeah, she taught me the. Espunamanicano. She taught me the nasty words. They said, what words you know? Sticky, sticky, licky, licky. <laughs> yeah, he got in there. They was like, listen, you facing 25 to life. He was like, listen, I give her up. I give her up. I give her up. I spin him. Yeah, no. It's coming to me now. Kind of starts the Anastasio Brandon Johnson. <laughs> Yeah, man, these chicks is out here with nose rings and they out here finessing your son. Watch your kid when your kid keeps saying, oh, I need to stay home from school. Every day you stand home from school, they might be going to get her pistol to go do a drive-by. I'm just saying. So that's what's happening over in Milwaukee. A little licky, licky, sticky, sticky over there. Some Espanol and some Spanish food and some Mexican food. Hey, ah, caramba. Ese, arriba. But that's not all. That's not all. It gets worse. I, I have to tell you, it gets much, much worse. Not only is this happening over in Milwaukee and all across the country, we just ain't found y'all yet. It gets even worse. So Kendria and Roger is being accused of basically sex trafficking, both the son and I believe, and I believe the mother is finessing kids. Y'all got to check this out. News now shocking allegations against the Klein Kane high school teacher. She is accused of trafficking students along with her son. ABC 13's Jessica Willie is live with the facts we have so far about this troubling case. Jessica. Yeah, we've learned this teacher was arrested just before five this evening at Klein Kane High School, taken to the district police department and then brought here to the Harris County Jail. Sheriff Ed Gonzalez says so far there are three teen victims ages 15, 16 and 17, all female students and runaways. He says more students have already come forward, though, saying she tried to recruit them as well into prostitution. Tonight, disturbing allegations against a Klein ISD teacher. Kedria Grigsby now charged with three counts of child trafficking and three counts of compelling prostitution. The 42 year old, a cosmetology teacher at Klein Kane High School. According to Harris County Sheriff Ed Gonzalez, investigators believe she recruited troubled teens from local high schools by offering them a place to stay. And she did it, he said, alongside her son, 21 year old Roger McGee, who is also under arrest. Klein Kane's principal tonight sent a message to families notifying them of the arrest, clearly stunned by the allegations. Quote, let us be clear, any behavior harming children is deplorable. And appealing to parents, quote, please speak to your children about this matter. And if you have information, please report it to Klein ISD police. The district has not disclosed how long she's been a teacher there, but according to Klein Kane's online cosmetology course information, she runs the program. Building people up and watching them soar is her passion, a slide says, also sharing several family photos. The school says she will never be allowed at any Klein ISD schools again. With potentially more victims, more charges are possible. So... 
Not only did you have one over there going doing the licky, licky, sticky, sticky, you had Mrs. Grigsby out here finessing the kids out here in Houston. Yo, imagine sending your kid to school. You already ain't got no money. You already broke. You already out here under duress. And your kid is now being recruited to be a sex worker, which is probably going to follow them for the rest of their life. And they being done through the son too. So you got a mama that's pimping her son out and using him as a mule in order to recruit a bunch of other girls to come and bust it down for a real one. In high school, this is the wild things that you guys have to be aware of because we don't want our children to be taken advantage of. The only question that I then have Hmm, I'm going to have to check that out, Tyler Reed. I'll be looking at that shortly. The only question that I have is, how much time is she going to get? Because we know that guys, we know that guys get the book thrown at them. How much time is she going to get? Just curious. Look, most of the articles that come across my desk for inappropriate teachers and this is just the honest to God truth, are women. Are women. And this is not even wild. I'll tell you this, it's not unheard of. And I'm just assuming that maybe young guys today is a little bit different and that they're willing to tell and say what's going on and stuff like this. But it's not unheard of for teachers, and it was always rumors and a lot of different places. I'm not going to say nothing like that or whatever. Because it can't, I don't know how to substantiate it to be true or not. But this is not unheard of on both sides for young girls to be talking to and getting busted down by an older teacher and for young boys to be busting down their female teachers. You know, these are the things that we need to really have an uncomfortable conversation in our community about because we always keep talking about gender reaffirming, sex transplants, and what you identify and pronouns, but we don't go back to the core of why these people find themselves in this situation in the first place. Real talk. Let me read a couple of super chats and then we're going to go ahead and get to it. Yeah. Oh, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Give me a second. Give me a second. Let me make sure that I'm looking at this the right way. We don't, we don't really get to it the way that we're supposed to. But hold on, hold on. Tyler Reed says, WGN just reported that the village of Dalton, Keith Freeman, has been indicted for bankruptcy fraud. Really? Let me go and check that out. Give me a second. Give me a second. Banks of bankruptcy fraud, huh? WGN. Keith Freeman. Dalton. Uh, let's see, let's see. I don't see anything. I don't see anything. Where did you see that at? Oh, Keith Freeman was the guy that was running her charity, right? I don't see anything. Nope, I don't see anything. So if I find something that actually, um, if I see something, then we'll talk about it and maybe I'll put it on tomorrow's show. But I don't see anything. I don't see anything. So... Yeah, I'll stay on top of it, but until I actually see something, 
Chicago WGN Channel 9. Okay, WGN. Let me look that up. WGN. I'm going to go to their website and see what's happening. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. right. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Hold on. Let me look at it. Let me pull it up. All right, I see it now. I see it now. I see it now. All right, give me a second. I'll pull it up for you guys and see if I can mine through this to better understand exactly what's happening out here in these streets, man. Nope, 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 nope. nope. Screen women. Let's go there. Y'all got me working overtime today, huh? All right, this is what I see. Literally just just popped off. It says, Tiffany's top lieutenant is indicted. Top administrator in both Thornton Township and the village of Dalton has been indicted for bankruptcy fraud. Keith, Re- uh, Keith Freeman is accused of underreporting his income from the village and the township during his own personal bankruptcy proceedings. Freeman, Freeman works for Dalton Mayor and, and Thornton Township Supervisor Tiffany Henyard, whose own spending transparency and leadership style come into question in a series of WGN investigate reports. All right, so it looks like he filed for bankruptcy. Freeman was also re- a registered agent for the Tiffany Henyard Cares Foundation, which WGN Investigates has reported gathering much of its early funding from the township and has va- failed to document expending. Freeman of Orland Park is charged with one count of bankruptcy fraud. Let me see. The charge is punishable by a maximum of a, a sentence of five years in prison. Ooh, wee. The dominoes is falling. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's not good. That's not good. Uh, stay on top of it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure we're going to deep dive into it a little bit more tomorrow, but I'm going to stay on top of it. So shout out to the super mayor. <laughs> you can't be out here doing dirt, man. Thank you to uh, Tyler Reed for keeping me informed. You can't be out here doing dirt without a clean rap sheet. So um, I'm going to be also updating the Patreon videos to make sure that they plan the way that they need to. But we're going to keep it moving on that. Recluse Gangster says, Mama says she wanted to get paid twice, legal and illegal. Yeah. Watch your kids, man. Watch your kids out here in these streets. But it's not just teachers. It's not just teachers, y'all. I think that that's the common misconception is that it's only teachers that's out here finessing these young dudes. It's not. I would have you to know, and it's not just black teachers either. I would have you to know that white women have a thing for these young black boys. White women, H-W-Y-T-E, have a thing for these young boys. And they're not necessarily teachers. They be 22, 23, 24, 30, 40, 50, 60. They love them some young boys before they get tainted with the system. They love them some young boys. This woman right here, a 22-year-old, 22-year-old is arrested and being charged. What is she being charged with, might you add? For posing as a girl that is much younger in order to attract younger boys. You cannot make this up. This is actually a thing. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your, your notifications. Check it out. And first up here at 10, a Tampa woman accused of posing as a homeschooled middle schooler over social media and molesting a student is now facing new charges. Four more victims have come forward, accusing 23-year-old Alyssa Zinger of lewd and lascivious behavior. Fox 13's Jennifer Vegas joins us now live in the newsroom. And Jennifer, how long has this been going on? 
Yeah, Brianna, you may recall our coverage in November when Alyssa Zinger was first arrested after one boy between the ages of 12 and 15 came forward, stating she posed as a 14-year-old over Snapchat and lured them to engage in sexual acts. Now, four more victims, all between 12 and 15 years old, have come forward, stating Zinger targeted them too. Zinger, who had been released on bond from her November arrest, was put in handcuffs again on Thursday, now facing 11 felonies, including lewd and lascivious battery and molestation, possession of child pornography, sexual cyber harassment, and more. The charges are very serious. Friday, ahead of Zinger's first appearance in court, state attorney Susie Lopez called the case every parent's worst nightmare. She was preying upon these victims who believed that they were actually her age when in fact she's a grown up. In November, Zinger was arrested by Tampa police. According to search warrants we obtained, in May 2023, she befriended students at Woodrow Wilson Middle School on Snapchat, posing as a 14-year-old homeschooled student and engaged in more than 30 sexual acts with one or more students from the school. Some she recorded and sent to other students. At the time, Zinger pled not guilty. State Attorney's Office has a dedicated unit, the Special Victims Unit. Our attorneys there are qualified and are trained to deal with cases, cases such as this in dealing with young victims who have been through traumatic experiences. Now, with the total of five victims coming forward, Lopez says there could be even more out there. This is an ongoing investigation, and so she could have traveled to other counties. We just don't know at this point. Friday, Zinger's defense attorney, Daniel Fernandez, spoke about what's to come this Monday in a pretrial hearing. We're obviously going to be seeking bail, so we'll be filing our own motion. As Tampa police, if these four victims all go to Woodrow Wilson Middle, I'm told that can't be disclosed at this time. This is still an active investigation. Let me tell you what I think happened. Let me tell you what I think happened. One of them found out that she was older and they was happy to be with her because they was like, yeah, I'm busting it down for a real one. Then they found out that the homeboys was over there busting her down for a real one that was going to the same school. And then jealousy set in, and next thing you know, everything imploded. I'm telling you what happens with a lot of these situations. That's my assumption. I don't know for sure. But here, I'll, I'll give it to you from a different angle. Make sure you guys understand what's going on. Now to a stunning case out of Tampa. That's where a woman allegedly posed as a teenager and tricked at least five boys under the age of 14 into dating her. Calvin is in the newsroom with what else was revealed in court today. And what a bizarre case here. Investigators say even family and friends of those boys met Alyssa Zinger under the guise that she was a teenager. In a hearing to determine if Alyssa Zinger walks free until her trial, Judge Laura Ward did not hold back on the evidence placed in front of her. What we know is you have been the adult. You have been preying upon them. You have been taking advantage of them. You have been abusing them based on the allegations that the state has put forth. Judge Ward ordered Zinger to remain in jail. She's not even an ugly chick. That's the interesting thing about it. Like, she not big and fat and ugly and all of this stuff. She, she just nasty. And she got a demon on her back. And she out here doing stuff that she shouldn't be doing. Nasty, 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 nasty. She got a nasty demon on her back. She could have got with grown men and let them do whatever it is that they wanted to do. But no, she wanted to bust it down for a real one. That's what she wanted to do. I'm going to show you all a video of her and one of the videos that she used to lure one of these young guys. But I'll get to that in a minute. 22-year-old is accused of posing as a homeschooled 14-year-old to sexually abuse at least five different teenagers between 13 and 14 years old in 2023. Detective Amanda Baronski testified Monday about what she uncovered, including alleged abuse of young boys. One victim telling investigator Zinger got jealous of his new girlfriend and started sharing revenge porn. He indicated that a sexually explicit video of himself and another minor was being circulated through Snapchat. Did he know who was doing it? Yes. Who was that? He identified the person as Miss Alyssa Zinger. Throughout the testimony, the Judge jail. Ward took note of Zinger's response to those claims. Every time something happens, um, 
that the state puts on that maybe you disagree with, you shake your head no. You don't seem to understand that the problem is not who recorded the video. The problem is you are in multiple videos with young boys 13 and 14 years old. You are an adult. You are manipulating, taking advantage of these young boys. She also called out Zinger's parents who were present in the courtroom for their actions during the search warrant. Look at the, hey, the father don't even want to be seen. Right. Look, look at the father. Once the mother whispered over to the father like, hey, the camera is on you, father said. That's what mama said. Hey, 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 listen, the camera is on you. Daddy didn't know that she was out there busting it down for a real one. Look. Parents who were present in the courtroom for their actions during the search warrant. But what I can't understand. He ain't trying to be in this video. He like, nah, Anton going to be playing this on a millionaire morning show. Nah, man, I got to go to my construction job in the morning. He just went, he, he was already on camera now. I would have just said, flipped him the bird or something like that. It ain't, it's too late now. Nah. understand is when they are trying to help you to the extent that it interferes with the criminal investigation and to the extent that it helps you. That's what he did. He hit the lean with it. Accountability Rock and responsibility. Body cam video shows her parents handing over a phone to police, but processing suggests it was actually her mother's old phone, one that never downloaded social media accounts and hadn't placed a call since 2021. And prosecutors would not say if criminal charges are possible for her parents. Meanwhile, investigators are looking into possible more victims out there. Zinger. They actually trying to charge the parents too. Let me see if I can pull up another video for y'all. So this is some of the videos that she had on a Snapchat, apparently, that they went and found. Alyssa Zinger, a 23-year-old grocery store worker, dance. Hell no. I don't know. No young boy that's not taking advantage of that. Y'all can think what y'all want to think. Alyssa Zinger, a 23-year-old grocery store worker, dance. Yeah, they, 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 they taking that. They take It's different for boys. That right there? I'm just telling you. It ain't, it ain't nobody that she can't, that's what makes her a predator is because you out there acting like you 14 and you built like a, like a 23 year old. Nah, hell no. Dancing on TikTok, she was already in legal trouble, accused of having sex with a junior high school student. Now she's facing more charges and her parents could also be in trouble. We have the scoop. Thanks for joining me for Crime Fix. I am used to posing as a homeschooled 14 year old girl so she could have sex with a boy who was between 12 and 15 years old. We first told you about Zinger last December when she was charged with two felony counts of lewd or lascivious battery and I five felony counts of lewd or lascivious molestation. Now Zinger is in the Hillsborough County Jail in Tampa. See, that's what you get, Brian B. You automatically said, nah, no, nah, no, nah, doing all of that, jumping around and Snapchatting and stuff like that, being off beat. Acting like you ain't got no rhythm. Well, she might not have no rhythm. But not having no rhythm and jumping up and down with all of them. Man, that ain't nothing but the devil. That's absolutely a lord. Man, it's grown men that can't not see it through. It's grown men that can't not see it through. You telling me that ain't no young bull gonna take advantage of that? Shit. I've seen do, dudes do, do more for less. Do more for less. Facing even more charges. She's now accused of having sex with five boys who are either 13 or 14. Now, this isn't a complete shock because he called Zinger, reported that Zinger had sent Look a video. The investigation began last October. Yeah, that's it. That's it's over. That's it. That's a grown woman right there. That's a grown woman. I don't know no grown men. Uh, yeah, I do know something that'll, that'll pull back. But it's very few grown men that wouldn't be like, ah, yeah, I see it. Do I figure it out? Now, you trying to tell me dudes that ain't even these young bulls? Man, yeah, right. 
Look at her. That's a grown woman talking about you 14. They, they be looking at them little frail needle nose glasses. Chicks that's in their class and then they look at her Snapchat. They be like, man. Shh. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, these young boys, they ain't nothing to play with. Ain't nothing to play with. She can sit there and pose all. They knew. They knew. What you don't think that they knew, they ain't look at her and they said, yeah, she 14. Man, they looked at her. They looked at their classmates. It was like, well, she might not be 14, but they going to see it through anyway. That's what makes it such a bad situation. That's what makes it such, such a predatory bad situation. Listen, prayers up for the young boys. Prayers up for the young boys, but I'm telling you why they seen it through. I, that's, see, I had to give y'all a little bit more insight so that y'all understand what was going on. But these women, these teachers, they have all shapes, sizes, ages, black, white. They coming for your son. Make sure y'all protect y'all son. Make sure y'all protect y'all son. And she was getting ran through. They said it was at least five of them and then maybe more. Man, that's crazy. Anyways, let me continue over with the show. Wealth Building Journey says, think about this. What if the modern women had an STD? Now, at least five boys might already be ruined. She going to be somebody's girlfriend. Yeah, they took that risk. I tell you that much. Rod Jones says, dad was like, Harpo, who this woman? Lean with it. Lean with it. Shout out to Rod Jones. I appreciate you. Thank you for continuing to support the platform, big dog. All right. Let's continue. So we're going to move over into a different city. I know we've been talking about Chicago a lot. I know we've been paying attention to what's going on in New York. But we got to get to a different city. And what city is that, ladies and gentlemen? Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. What city is that, lady, ladies and gentlemen? We got to go to Oakland. So shout out to Shang Tsung. Who, who ain't here in, uh, in Oakland? I call her Shang Tsung, but I don't remember exactly what her name is. Shout out to the mayor of Oakland. Oakland is becoming one of the worst cities in America. You know, when I was a younger lad before my 40s, I'm 42 years old as of this weekend. When I was a younger lad, I was going to do a, a worst American cities tour, right? Black Beauty said, AD, if she was a bit, I'm going to read that super chat shortly. I got you, Biz Q. I'm going to read that super chat shortly. When I was a younger man, I was going to actually do a Worst Cities of America tour and, you know, record it and make it a whole series. And I said, nah, I ain't got time for that. Ain't nobody trying to be out here in these streets. I'm good. I'm good. Let me go ahead and rebrand and then have a whole nother conversation. But Oakland is on fire, ladies and gentlemen. And it's bad. I mean, it's getting worse than ever before. Let me give you all some insight on what's going on over in Oakland. This is what the police is battling, all right? Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. In Oakland overnight, police say illegal sideshows took over several intersections across the city. Police say fireworks and gunshots were reported at many of them. We've been complaining. The residents have been complaining to the chief and deputy chiefs that we need more assistance because not only it happened this Sunday here, last Sunday we ran into the one on 35th and Foothill. Council member Noel Gallo was out and happened to drive by one of the scenes. Video from another shows cars on fire and at one point this happened. I mean, there were two, three hundred young people watching the show. Cars spinning around, cars all over the place. And, but I've never seen so many police come together. Every street was blocked off. What impressed me is they not only came, they cited the, those that are in the middle of the sideshow. We asked OPD about the number of arrests or citations, but have not heard back yet. Police say when more officers arrived, the vehicles and spectators dispersed. After last weekend's sideshow, the department posted a reminder on social media. If you participate in illegal sideshows, your vehicle could be towed and seized with a 30-day hold. I mean, that's the bottom line. We need to enforce the law. He says the reality is Oakland needs more police officers and when it comes to the sideshow it's both a safety issue and a priority when they at when the man when my man hit the car 
when my man hit the police officers in order to get through, they just let him go. They didn't chase him. They didn't go on a high-speed pursuit or anything like that. He just ran through. I actually looked at a previous video with this. Look. I mean, there were two, three hundred young people watching the show. Cars. They don't even trip. They just go ahead. Doosh. They had cars on fire. They was burning up cars in the middle of the street. Oakland is wild, y'all. Oakland is not a real city. It's not a real city. It is, it is, this is Oakland. This is America. This is literally the United States of America. Oakland is setting cars on fire. The police can't chase down the criminals. None of that. And they don't even run. They ain't worried about no explosion. They ain't worried about none of that. They just be standing there like, yeah, yeah, this is what we do. This is what we do. Oakland, they done lost every sports team. All the businesses is closing. Even Keith Lee said that we can't even go over to Oakland. It's crazy over there. Night of sideshow chaos in Oakland with gunshots and car fires. But residents say what's different this time is that it ended with a big response from the police. As That's Don police tied again to We even have video of someone intentionally ramming a police car. From West Oakland That's to so East Oakland, dangerous. sideshow participants took over at least six major intersections early Sunday morning. Police say people spun Look donuts, fired shots into the air, and even set a couple of cars on fire. Some of the participants mocked parents with this sign that reads, drive like your kids live here. But the real fireworks happened at the intersection of High Street and Foothill Boulevard around 4.30 a.m. As drivers were burning rubber and laughing at the cops, dozens and dozens of officers were coordinating and blocking off all the escape routes. It all unfolded in front of neighbor Debbie Wilson's house. I applaud them. I applaud them. They need to arrest them and keep them in there. The 65-year-old says the monthly sideshows near her house hurt her health. She recently had a stroke. I take seizure medication. That's crazy. I've been having strokes and seizures. So this kind of chaos I don't need around me. It terrorizes me and it scares me. Neighbors say it's dangerous for everyone. They crash sometimes really close to our house. Like for example, that the neighbor's house right there, they crashed into the gate and made like a big dent in it. And I'm worried, I was like, what if they crash into my house, you know? When you guys um, go and buy properties a lot of times, and I know there are some people, y'all say go get the belt. <laughs> When y'all go and buy properties and y'all go and get these places and stuff like that, what else, What I want y'all to also do is not just look at it in the daytime that the, the, the realtor decided to schedule it to you when you don't see what's happening. Y'all need to go by on every single night for two weeks straight. Just, just go by at night at random times in the night. 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. Just drive by. And make sure you go and see what's going on because you don't even know that you're buying a property where they're about to do a side show on. You don't know that you're buying a property that's about to get shot up at night. Go at night and go and look at the properties at night. Real talk, because that's going to show you whether you really want to buy that property or not because it's going to be bad. It's going to be very, very bad, I'm telling you. As police started ticketing participants and spectators, some drivers found a narrow pathway out of the blockades. Officers quickly used a patrol car to block that route. A short time later, one driver drove a white Infinity into two police cars to leave the area. He wasn't done. That driver returned to challenge the officers. And then he came back to challenge the officers. He didn't just go and run. He didn't just go and run. He came back and he did a burnt out and he challenged the officers. Jesus Christ. An officer appeared to fire some kind of non-lethal projectile to scare the driver away. Other participants tried to leave, but didn't get very far. Officers arrested several drivers and cited a lot of spectators. They also impounded a number of cars. Pay can pay. We paying, we suffering, make them pay. What impressed me is they not only came, 
they cited the, those that are in the middle of the sideshows, and they arrested other people. Shout out Council to Dead Pill Reacts. says typically the cops just disperse the crowds and let them go. Neighbors ask, why can't the cops do this every time? The response I get, well, we don't have enough officers. Hmm. Well, we don't have, you know, enough money in overtime to pay for officers to be here. Police say it can be very dangerous, especially when they're outnumbered by the large crowds. Aside from hitting police cars, some of the participants set two cars on fire, likely stolen. As for Debbie, she says shut them down for her health and the health of the city. I'm from the old school and I'm from the south. They want to shoot and fight somebody and want to drive crazy, send them to the army. Give them an ultimatum. A lot of the neighbors did not want to go on camera. They worried about retaliation, but they say Miss Debbie Wilson spoke their mind. They added one more thing, saying the cops cannot arrest their way out of the problem. They say the parents have to do a better job and get more involved with these young people. We've been hearing that for a long time. How come every time that we see this happen, and this is the second day in a row, where somebody said, hey, man, it's the parents. The parents got to get control of what's going on out in these streets, man. Parents got to get control of what's going on out in these streets. And, oh, Eric Daniels, you can forget it. You said more officers mean more taxes. All of the businesses left. All of the residents left. All of the sports teams left. All of the big dogs left. And so now the tax base is eroded, and y'all can get what y'all wanted when y'all said defund the police. But that's not all that's happening in Oakland. It's not just sad shows, ladies and gentlemen. This is the latest to hit my desk from a news perspective of the types of crimes that people are dealing with over in Oakland. An Oakland business owner ducks for cover as thieves carry out one of the most brazen daytime armed robberies we've seen. Tonight, how this shocking crime caught on camera, as you can see, could be the last straw for the store that's called Oakland home for 40 years. It's a story you'll see only on 7. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dan Ashley. And I'm Dion Lim. That violent heist happened at one of Oakland Chinatown's oldest jewelry stores. The damage done is simply remarkable. But despite all of this, the store owner says their vow to keep it open is stronger than ever. And they're pledging to move forward in the wake of this crime. No, please, no, please, no, please. The chaos and terror that unfolded at Fung Jewelry in Oakland's Chinatown Wednesday just after noon. It happened so fast. Is unlike anything the family-owned business has ever experienced in their more than 40 years in operation. We've been robbed, you know, a few times before, but not at this level of brazen magnitude. Eight individuals with, you know, two getaway cars and, you know, guns drawn. Watch as Tony Trin's 69-year-old mother Diane ducks for cover and screams for help as those eight individuals smash nearly every single case. With no security guard on duty at the time, her 76-year-old husband comes storming in, wielding a firearm, which scares the suspects away. If he didn't do that, then they would have just kept going. Their American dream and the majority of the store... At least like 85%, 90%. Gone in less than a minute. My mom was, you know devastated my dad was broken a devastating blow made worse after the family let their business insurance lapse due to rising premiums Dang. her entire life's work savings gone in a few minutes it is rough you know my mom is the leader of the pack and she's been running the business as she suffers i I kind of suffer through the same pain. Crime Dang. in the area is what prompted Tony to become executive director of the Oakland Chinatown Improvement Council. Despite what happened, he remains optimistic. And I've seen tremendous progress even though it doesn't feel like that in terms <sighs> That's of cleaning and safety ambassadors there's a lot more out there with the night patrols and and we have our walking police officers during the pandemic we didn't but is he optimistic enough to stay in business we'd love to it's just with the environment and how tough it's been um yeah, we, we don't know yet. Diane says she'll be back to work tomorrow to send a greater message. We can't let the fear overcome. The only way to reduce crime is actually to have more traffic, more events, more people, so that way we'll have more resources. Strong Oakland Chinatown is a, is a strong town for you know every community, especially in Oakland. Oakland police ask anyone with information on this case to contact the robbery division. Now, because Fong Jewelry does not have insurance coverage, the Oakland Chinatown Improvement Council is running a GoFundMe to help. You can find a link to it at this story at our website, abc7news.com.
That's messed up, bro. Gosh. She don't even have insurance because she wound up letting it lapse. Man, your entire life savings, everything that you ever invested, it's all just gone in a snap because people came in and they wanted to just take your American dream away. Gosh. I feel sorry for anybody that actually moves to Oakland. Or is anybody still stuck in Oakland? I honestly feel sorry for them. I, I, why, why would it, why is a GoFundMe for a jewelry store wild considering the details that we just shared? I mean, I'm not saying that everybody is going to go to the, donate to the GoFundMe or anything like that, but why is that wild? Why is the wild part? Because y'all saying a GoFundMe for a jewelry store is wild and they basically just told you that they let the insurance lapse because it was so expensive or, they, you know, the cost of running the business continued to go up. They don't have no other intangible skills. They don't have no, probably don't have no degree. They've been running that store literally for decades. Why is the wild part, why is the wild part not the fact that criminals are able to get away and just take other people's stuff that don't belong to them? That's the wild part. The wild part is the criminals. Listen, business owners should be able to operate without having to worry about people coming in and destroying their stuff. People should be able to have homes without having to worry about squatters. Police officers shouldn't have to worry about getting taken out every single day in shootouts. The wild part is that we live in a, a, a chaotic society where our president is more concerned about what is happening over in Ukraine then what's happening here in the United States of America and all of this crime that's happening in the, in the major, major cities? That's the wild part. I don't know. I could be off, man. I could be off. Don't get me going because I don't be knowing. Uh, let me go ahead and read some of the Super Chats because, you know, I'll be off. I know I'm off. Black Beauty is in the building, says, AD, if she was your babysitter, don't lie. Nah. Nah. I'm chilling. I'm chilling. Never wanted a chick for the streets. No matter how old I was, I never wanted a chick for the streets. I wanted chicks that dudes didn't have access to. Biz Q says, my college boyfriend told me he took down his coach's wife and ran a train on her, and her son was also on the team. Oh, God. Also took down his mom's friend, he was 15 and 16, and they were still shooting um, on IG years later. Gosh. That got to hurt. That has to hurt. This is, this is why guys used to keep their women at home and didn't let them go out into the workforce. Jay Smith says, soundtrack to these Oakland streets, E4. Tell me when to go. 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 Dum, 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 dum. Shout out to E. Fonzarelli. E. Fonzarelli. Shout out to E. Feezy for Sheezy. E. Fonzarelli. Uh, watched Too Much Reality 7 says, Anton, you still firmly believe if you broke, don't have children. I agree, though. Do you also feel like kids don't need cell phones? I believe that kids, uh, well, it depends on how old they are. I do believe that kids need cell phones. And I wouldn't, I personally, I would never tell somebody to do something that I wouldn't do myself. I would never tell somebody to go and have children and they broke. What do you think that that's going to translate into? I would never ever tell somebody not to have children if they broke. And yes, you do need a cell phone. At the very least, they need an Apple Watch so you can always track where they are. Now is worse than ever before. Shout out to you, good question. Charles Freeman says, what up, D? God bless, man, and it's wild out here. Stay safe. <laughs> Shout out to my dog, Charles Freeman, in the building. Twister Pup says, I'm only 35 minutes from there. Time to move back to Indiana ASAP. <laughs> I don't know why y'all moved out there in the first place. 
Rod Jones says the security guard was conveniently off duty. They couldn't even afford insurance. What made you think that they could afford a security guard? Listen, this stuff is not as complicate, complicated as y'all think that it is. Like, they get nothing out of their store getting destroyed and not even being able to get insurance money. It's tough. It's absolutely tough. People don't realize that it's much, much, much harder to be a business owner than you think that it is. It's way harder being a business owner than you think that it is. Anyways, let's continue over with the show. So, let's move over to overseas relations right here in the United States of America. Protesters. Palestine. Palestine. Shut down Chicago and San Francisco. Protesters shut down Chicago and San Francisco. Why? And what happened to them? And what did the people have to do as a result of it? They had to walk all the way to the airport. Check this out. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, and turn on your notifications. Across the country today, pro-Palestinian protesters blocked traffic, calling for an end to military action in Gaza. They shut down the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco and stopped vehicles from getting to O'Hare this morning. The demonstration forced a lot of people to miss their flights, while others just got out and walked. Patrick Fazio has that story for us from O'Hare. Protesters brought traffic to a standstill on I-190 getting into O'Hare during the morning rush. They got a right to protest, but the, they shouldn't have a right to shut down a whole airport like this. Passengers abandoned their taxis or ride chairs and walked to the airport, dragging their suitcases to try to catch their flights. My Uber driver just dropped me off of that corner. I'm going to walk, catch the tram in. Other passengers diverted to the O'Hare Transit and Rental Car Facility to catch the tram to the terminals. I got three minutes to make my flight. Three I, minutes to make your flight? I'm going to miss my flight, yeah. You're missing your flight? Though? I missed it. Not only did passengers miss their flights, the protesters also impacted those landing at O'Hare who missed their rides to meetings and appointments. It's a cluster, to be honest with you. Yeah. I'm not missing my flight, I got in, but I'm missing appointments. OEMC, Chicago's Office of Emergency Management and Communications, sent out an alert this morning about taking the blue line to avoid traffic from the protest, but it was too late for some. It's wrong, I hope the pro protesters are, are put in jail. I mean, it's, I, the cause is, is may, maybe uh, right, you know, one side, you, there's two sides to every uh, situation, but, um, it's not the way to do it. Not, they're not getting any fans. I think Chicago Police Department failed. They should have anticipated this. They should have known about it in advance. What are they doing? OEMC says officers cleared the protest around 930 this morning, and then it took about an hour or so for traffic to clear and get back to normal. Reporting at the O'Hare Transit Facility, Patrick Fazio, NBC5 News. And things are back to normal around O'Hare, but it was a mess during, during the morning rush. Pro-Palestinian protesters blocked traffic heading to the airport. Travelers literally had to get out of the vehicles and walk with their luggage to get to the terminal. And it wasn't just in Chicago. Similar protests were held across the nation. So what can we expect this summer leading up to the DNC? Here's Charlie Bujahusky. So close and yet so far. They got a right to protest, but they, they shouldn't have a right to shut down a whole airport like this. Hundreds of travelers forced to find their way around a protest this morning that shut down the feeder ramp to O'Hare Airport part of a series of coordinated events around the country designed to focus attention on the Palestinian cause and U.S. policy in the Middle East. In San Francisco, it even shut down the Golden Gate Bridge. A number of different people are going to want to demonstrate and be seen and or heard. Ed Yanka of the American Civil Liberties Union says we can expect similar protests this summer, especially around the Democratic National Convention. There is is going to be some inconvenience because, say, there'll be a ma major up, demonstration Jordan? on Daily Plaza that may spill out onto the streets. Uh, there may be, you know, events uh, around the convention in which people are marching up and down streets. And hey, um, is it any way that we can get these people sent over there? Listen, I don't. I don't have a dog in this fight outside of the fact that 
I don't like the fact that a lot of our resources is going outside of the country in the first place. But I am also um, trying to figure out, number one, how do you stop people from doing what they're supposed to do? Catching their flights, they got meetings, you don't know what's going on. Somebody could be missing something for a funeral or whatever. And then it's a bunch of people that's not even born here disrupting how our how our how we supposed to be doing what we supposed to be doing ain't, ain't it a way for us to go ahead and just ship them on over there or something like that when they doing stuff like this i seen it we gonna get to it h2 we gonna get to it is it a way for us to ship people over somewhere when they not even from here seriously seriously you're not going to come out here and, and cause chaos and disruption. I'm checking all papers, license, registration, everything. I'm checking everything. They be messing up the, the police officers, emergency services. You can't get nowhere. And they just shutting down traffic and messing up flights. And it's all coordinated. They all working together. They all working on social media, putting it together and all of that. No fear, no control, no nothing. This don't happen in Russia. This don't happen in certain other countries. They shut that junk down immediately. And things of that nature. So there will be some inconvenience, but isn't that the price we pay for living in a democracy? And while the protests may be happening here in Chicago, it's often important to remember that the message is meant for another audience. The audience for much of the speech we're likely to see in and around the convention will be the delegates themselves. Yanka says the city and the DNC need to have a plan to allow for people to participate in vigorous but lawful expression. And Chicago residents should be proud that the debate is happening here. Somebody is out and willing to stand in the sun, willing to, you know, stand in the rain, willing to march up and down after work. Maybe, you know, it's worth time just to stop and listen to what they have to say. Nope. Absolutely not. I don't want to hear them. I don't want to talk to them. When I went over to D.C., as a matter of fact, the main protest that I thought was that I had seen in person, the, the first protests that I had seen in mass and I had pulled out my drones and I had reported on it and I recorded it. And I think that I put some of the footage on the Anton Daniels channel was during black lives matters. And I was looking at them. And when I went out there and I seen those protests, I was so weirded out because the first thing that I was thinking to myself was this don't even make sense. You telling me that businesses can't open here in Michigan. Cause I was in Michigan when the first, when the protest first popped off. And then I moved down to Florida, and I was like, you know what? We might be thinking about moving to Miami, but that's neither here nor there. But, you know, we was over there, and I was looking, and I said, wait a minute. So you're telling me that businesses can't open, people can't go and see each other, we got a freeze and stay in place uh, moratorium, six feet, no check, you can't, you got to have a mask on in every store that you go into. But I'm looking at all of these people, and they holding hands, and they standing side by side, and they protesting, and they tearing statue down, and they burning up the auto zone and the Wendy's, and they not social social distancing. Remember social distancing? Sometimes I get in elevators in different buildings. Sometimes the buildings that I go to, and I see the little stickers on the floor that they never peeled up, and it say "Stay six feet or six whatever away from the next person." And I was like, "This don't even make no sense." This is nothing but a distraction from the thing that we should be really focusing on. Real talk. And I was looking at these people in person. I said, this is so weird. So weird. It's just crazy. He's Alejandro Guzman is joining us live from the airport. Ali, do we know if any of these situations caused flight delays? According to, um, you know, airport officials, no. In fact, airlines say they saw no major impacts to their operations. And in fact, at this hour, there's hardly any delays in getting to and from the airport at this hour. Not even a single line at this hour, in fact. But there are some residual frustrations from today's demonstration. Pro-Palestine protesters heard chanting as they sat with their arms Look at these silly, look at these people. 
Look at these people. You know the other place that I seen protests at that I was just really weirded out is when I went and did my first uh, meetup in D.C. I went and I, had, I went and I visited the White House for the first time, and we was actually able to talk to a police officer over there. When it wasn't a police officer, it was like an agent, and they invited us back um, to do a to do a, sp a special tour at the White House, and so that was awesome. Actually, you know who I was with? It was me, Rita, and it was Brittany B. Shout out to Brittany B. It was me, Rita, and Brittany B, and we all was walking, and we went and seen the Treasury, and we seen the White House, and we seen tent cities. And then in front of the White House, you know, if you look over at the White House, I don't know if you guys ever actually been there, but if you look at the White House, is snipers that's walking around on the roof and stuff. And then if you look right directly, because I thought we was going to go and visit a peaceful White House, and we was going to see some things. And it was a bunch of crazies outside. It was a whole lot of crazies outside. Yep, that is true. It is absolutely true. And people was wilding, and I was talking to the uh, guy. And he was like, oh, yeah, man, that guy get arrested pretty regularly. And that guy is crazy. And this guy is like this and all of that. And I was like, these people ain't got no jobs. They just out here riding around, protesting, causing problems in the middle of the daytime. Ain't nobody got no jobs. And then it was a scuffle that broke out, and then somebody got arrested. And I'm like, this is too crazy. I ain't got time to be throwing no, throwing no support behind something that ain't generating no revenue for me. In a sleeping dragon, locking themselves together, prolonging their efforts. I was waiting for my girlfriend for 30 minutes. Had no idea what was going on. They can't even get out here, and there's no way to get into the airport. The protest started around 2.30 Monday afternoon, shutting down International Boulevard as travelers, rideshare drivers, and crew buses were backed up for Messing miles. Messing up all the money. It took, me, it took me about two hours to get here. Um, Traffic is not the problem. The problem is we have problems in another country that we need to focus on. We can't just say, oh, no, this is a problem. Travelers like Kevin Shaw walking two-plus miles to leave SeaTac hoping to get picked up. Others forced to make the trek and catch their flight. The reason unclear is protesters... Not the, not the feminine black man that came in to give his, give his opinion. Let me see if they're going to show him again. Refused to talk to us, but their message was loud and clear. A huge banner sprawled across the road saying our taxes are funding genocide, specifically on tax day. Protesters have been calling for a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war for months now after the invasion of Israel in October of 2023. A divisive issue across the world we saw playing out as the protests continued. So how does this solve? It doesn't solve Any of nothing. That. It doesn't solve nothing. So then but the they thing can is get off the road and let... Mission accomplished. It took police a little more than three hours to get protesters off the street and reopen the road. Because you're just disrupting normal, normal people's lives and this doesn't solve anything. The impacts are still being assessed by airport officials and airlines. Yet nationwide, we're looking at 23,849 delays. Here at SeaTac, 140, according to FlightAware. I believe this is evil. This is evil? Thank you, sir. You know, it was great having a conversation with you. your right to protest. Everybody has a way to do things. And if it's but disrupt... You have to respect us being disgruntled. Sounds just like a Black Lives Matter situation. Anyways, I don't understand why people feel the need to be able to disrupt other people's lives that don't even have nothing to do with it instead of actually going and having a conversation with the people that's... Anyways, never mind. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. We'll get there. So, yeah, man. Uh, let me read a couple of Super Chats, and then we're going to continue over with the show. Uh, Ricky H. is in the building. Ricky H. says the, the new American dream is getting out of America. Is that the sentiment? I might have to talk about Passport Bros today. On after hours. Where else is there better to live than here in America? And I'm talking about live, work, and play. I'm not talking about make your money here and then going to get somewhere else. I'm saying, where else do you live? I'm opposed. I want y'all to think about that before we get into after hours tonight. Where else do you live? Or do you go to 
in order to, I ain't talking about no passport, bro, specifically, but I'm just saying in general, if you guys could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? Portugal, Panama, Malta, Dubai, Italy. Ah, we'll talk about it tonight. Keep y'all thoughts to yourselves to tonight. Shout out to Ricky. I appreciate you for the super chat. David says, just a reminder, it's election year, all a setup. Now, you know I know that. You know I know that. You know I know that. Set up. Shout out to my dog, David. Ken J says, they should protest on the train tracks. <laughs> Ken J is a wild boy. Come on, man. Y'all can't afford to live in Dubai. Y'all think y'all can live in Dubai like around the year round for rent for a long time? All right. We'll talk about it tonight. We'll talk about it tonight. Try to get my dog Quentin up on the panel and see what the word is. All right. Last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, one more thing because we definitely want to make sure that we stay within that two hour mark. We at the one hour and 45 second uh, mark right now. Last but not least, we want to stay uh, international, and there's new plans, new plans for funding on Israel, Ukraine, that's being proposed by the GOP and your conservative leadership. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel, turn on your notifications. If you guys have not already, make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I want to get y'all thoughts on this really quickly. House Speaker Mike Johnson unveiled a Republican-led foreign aid package yesterday. According to three sources familiar with the process, the legislation would include three aid measures with roughly tens of billions of dollars for Israel, Ukraine, Taiwan, and allies in the Indo-Pacific. A fourth measure would include national security priorities, such as seizing Russian assets in the U.S., a loan lease program for Ukraine, and additional sanctions on Iran. Johnson says his preference is to vote on each bill individually, but will let the chamber decide. They're precipitating events around the globe that we're all watching very carefully, and we know that the world is watching us to see how we react. Um, we have uh, terrorists and tyrants and terrible leaders around the world, like Putin and Xi and, uh, and in Iran, and they're watching to see if America will stand up for its allies and in our own interest around the globe, and we will. Well, uh, but they haven't. I, I'm very glad he said that. Uh, and uh, hope that he actually comes through with, with a clean aid bill to Ukraine. They haven't said it, but they, they, they're talking about it now. What's it look like, Richard? Look, uh, I don't much care whether it's a combined bill or, or a, you know, a separate bill, so long as the aid for Ukraine passes. That's the most pressing of all of that. Right. Uh, and you know, every day the battlefield news, Joe, is is awful strategically, but also in human terms. The idea that you have these soldiers on the front lines who simply maybe have a half dozen shells and they have to parcel them out to get through a day. You can't fight a weather way, and it's tilting in Russia's favor. This is recklessness and irresponsibility on steroids that we've ever reached this 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 point. I'm hoping, and again, to me, it doesn't matter so much whether it's loans or grants. Just get Ukraine the military aid more and sooner. You know, there's obviously going to be a compromise here. It'll be less than Ukraine wants and needs, arguably. It's obviously been later. Some of the economic terms won't be as generous. But right. if that's the price of getting it, let's pay the price. Let's bring in Admiral James Trevitas. He's a former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO, retired four-star Navy Admiral, and the international analyst for NBC News. Admiral, your thoughts on this aid? Uh, I'm with Richard. Get it done. And frankly, it doesn't matter whether it's linked together, although I can make a pretty good argument that they all kind of fit together. But at this point, uh, without question, the, the racehorse that needs to be in the pole position is Ukraine. Look, the Israelis are not going to be defeated by Hamas. Uh, certainly, China is a longer-term problem. The one that really matters now, now, now is getting the aid to Ukraine. It's a military imperative. The only bright spots in Ukraine are the hits against the Russian Black Sea fleet at sea have been quite effective. Mm -hmm. Other than that, the Ukrainians are on their back foot both in the air and on the land. Good news, they're going to add F-16s over the next couple of months, but that will not tip this balance without the 
bread and butter of hardcore ammunition for the battlefield, particularly artillery shells. Got to get done. And, and final thought, uh, to draw a line under something the speaker said, which is the world is watching. It yeah. is so let me let me give you all a little bit of a summary of how I interpret this and, and why people are so uh, emotionally and financially invested. And what's going on with this whole Ukraine war? Let me rewind this for a second and, and show this display. OK, House Speaker Mike Johnson is saying that we want to separate this instead of talking about this in one whole package. And the reason that he wants to do that is because it's very difficult for there to be a negotiation. And the context is missing here. OK, and I'm going to break it down from a C student's perspective. It's very difficult for them to get anything done because everything is in one package. So, for example, the Biden administration is saying, hey, listen, we want all of these billions and billions and hundreds of billions of dollars to continue to flow over to Ukraine for their proxy war with Russia, Israel for the aid, Taiwan. Now, why would they say Taiwan? Well, Taiwan because they are actually also in a war and in a race with other countries, including China, in the chip war. And China wants to take over Taiwan, and the United States of America wants to protect that chip because, why? They want to maintain their lead from a techno technological perspective, and they want to protect their interests in Taiwan. And so when they say aid, they're really talking about their financial interest in another country. And so this is what's happening with the Biden administration. They saying, listen, we want all of these wars and we want to make sure even though we send and we're not sending American troops, we send American dollars. So it's us. It's the people. I did mention Sudan. It's us. It's the people. Think about that for a minute, though. She think about it. They're not focused on what's happening in Sudan. Right. Why? Because they have no financial interest and the genocide and the civil war that's happening over in Sudan. It's not about saving lives. So when these politicians talk to you and they say, well, listen, guys, we have to protect Israel. We got to make sure that we help the Ukrainians. But they don't give a damn about what's happening over in Sudan. And over 10,000 people is estimated a day to be dying based off of starvation from the civil war that's happening over there. Now, I'm not saying that we should or we shouldn't. That's up to you to decide as an individual on what you stand for. But we can't ignore why this show exists in the first place. And it's called The Millionaire Morning Show. And the reason that it's called The Millionaire Morning Show is because we understand that even though we act like we all humanitarians, it all comes back down to this. And so we have to protect our interests. And so we'll spend billions here and we'll ignore these people over here and let them die off and say, hey, y'all gotta fix y'all own problems. So how do we pick and choose who gets money and who doesn't get money? Well, that's when you got to start going into the details to understand what are the U.S.'s interests, more importantly, what are companies that also lobby for and donate to the campaign of your politicians, what are their interests? Hello. Who is this? From who? Hey, how you doing? Can you call can you can you call me back in like an hour? Okay, okay, thank you. Anyways, um, but you gotta start deep diving to understand that was an important call. Now you gotta deep dive to understand what the interests are, not only from the United States of America, but also from people that are funding the people that are in office and have these super PACs and what interests do they have and what's going on in other countries. Now, why do we want to break these things up? And why? Because on the surface, it could say, oh, my God, the GOP and Republicans and conservatives are saying that they want to fund these things. No, it's a negotiation, right? It's a negotiation. And the negotiation is from the Biden side and from liberal side. They're saying, hey, listen. We want this aid. We want this money. We want this money to continue to flow over to Ukraine. We want it in this amount. We don't want to lower it. We want this amount to continue to front up, go over to Ukraine, Taiwan, Israel, right? 
aid, all of this stuff, right? We want this money to go over there. And we're not going to protect the borders. And so your funding package for national security and border protection is going to largely be tied all into one whole budget. So they saying, we want a bipartisan deal. Bipartisan meaning that we want to work together and you give me what I want and then I'm going to figure out how to give you what you want. And Republicans are saying, listen, to fix and protect the border and focus on American interests based off of what conservative values are, we understand that this is what you want and we may be able to give you a little bit, but what you're asking for is too much and it shouldn't come along with you holding up our borders and border security and making sure that Texas and immigrants flowing into this country is cut off. And so that's why they then go in and they say, well, listen, we need to focus on these things individually instead of focus on them collectively because every time that we come together and we trying to make sure that we get a funding package for the national government, we got to keep extending it and we don't actually fix it because you keep trying to ask for too much and you keep trying to ask for too much and we can't come to an agreement. And so we keep having these short term solutions instead of having long term conversations on how we can get ourselves out of this or how we can find ourselves protecting our borders. And so what they're basically doing, what these politicians are doing is holding you hostage as Americans while also leveraging your resources to fund the initiatives from the people that's pulling the strings behind the walls. Is that too much from a C student's perspective? And so when you see these talking points, you got to consider the source. This is MSNBC. And so they're saying, let's just get it done. Let's just get it done. Let's just get it done. But the devil is in the details. And the questions that we're not asking ourselves, and the most unpopular part of this conversation that we have in here on the Millionaire Morning Show is the thing that should be the most meaningful to you because you are the ones that's paying for it. Look, 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 look. We had a conversation about a lot of different things today. And now we're starting to expand the platform to not only talk about what's happening financially, but also what's happening politically, what's happening internationally, how you guys are affected, what's going to happen in the 2024 election, how things is happening and shaping up in individual cities from a crime perspective, and then also the teachers that's finessing these students, right? And so we're talking about a whole bevy of things in a two-hour time span, five days a week, Monday through Friday. But I will guarantee you this, and I know this for a fact because I know the statistics, I know the analytics, and I look at the data. The most unpopular part of this show is not nasty teachers throwing it back for a real one in high school. It's not the bridge being shut down as a result of people preventing people from getting to their flights. It's not the burnouts and the side shows over in Oakland. Those things are entertaining and it's so fun to talk about it. But when we start to break down why you spending your money and why the budget deficit is so high, and why you guys can't get no control and what you should be paying attention to as far as determining who has the best policy and who's going to do the thing that's in the best interest of you, the individual taxpayer, both on a local level and an international level and a national level. People don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about what relevance does Taiwan have in Israel and these proxy wars and a chip war and a semiconductor chip shortage and what was going on in the pandemic and all of that? People don't want to talk about that. That's not popular. So now I got to throw it in at the end of the show just to make sure that you understand what's happening with your tax dollars and what the real war is. It's a class war. It's a class war, not a race war, not a gender war. Those are all of the things that keep you distracted, even though it plays a significant role in how you vote, how you see things, what you look at, how much tax dollars you're going to pay, and whether or not you even be able to feed your children tomorrow. This is not a popular subject. This is not something that people like to talk about. This is the stuff that they want to pretend like they know about, and then they want to skip over it. I actually talked about, I talked to Logic the last time that we was doing after hours on uh, Saturday, and I said, Logic, Logic said, Anton, Anton. I don't know what the fuck is going on. I meet people don't want to talk about Israel and they got the National Surveillance Act coming up and it's going to spy on people. And, you know, you do you see what just happened with Iran and Israel? And I say, yeah, logic, but we got to put the medicine inside of the candy because the people don't want to talk about where their tax dollars is going. 
They only want to pretend like they know what's going on in order to be able to vote for somebody that their parents told them to vote for, not for the fact that they actually know why they're voting for who they're voting for based off of policy. So now I got to put something in the title about somebody busting it down for a real one. Or Diddy is out here Harlem shaking. Like, like Diddy is really affecting your life. Do y'all really want to know about Hollywood so much to where that's actually more important than the things that's actually happening that you funding? Yes. Come on, let's admit it. Yes. <laughs> LeBron James did a new dunk at 40. Oh, my God. Let's reignite. The Jordan versus LeBron debate for the next 1,000th time. Now, let me put Tia Mori up here somewhere, and then y'all want to talk about, oh, my God, I can't believe she ain't trying to go back to her husband. But then we start talking about what's happening with this Ukraine war and this proxy war and who's funding it and why they're trying to do it, and the GOP is trying to separate it in order to fund the government, and then the borders of... Don't blame me. Don't blame me. I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to educate you. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just trying to keep you informed because that's what we do on the Millionaire Morning Show. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, and, and people of the jury, this is the greatest show on earth. <laughs> so we're going to continue to mine it out. We're going to mine it out. We're going to talk about it. We're going to have uncomfortable conversations. We're going to entertain ourselves. Room 9 is going to be a political... What do y'all want Room 9 to be? Y'all tell me, what do y'all want Room 9 to be? I got a channel right now that I'm sitting on, and it's got like it's a little less than 50,000 subscribers. I think it's like 47.9, 47, 48,000 subscribers or something like that. And I'm sitting on this channel, and I'm warring within myself trying to understand exactly what I want this channel to be. What would you guys like to see? As a matter of fact, you know what? Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Think about it. Tap into After Hours tonight, and I want to get y'all feedback on what you would like what's currently named Room 9 to become. What would you like that to be? It could be a sports channel. It could be a politics channel. It could be a channel that's just based off of pure reactions. It could be talking about something obscure. It could be a debate show. It could be review video. It could be whatever it is that y'all want it to be. But I'm seeking feedback from the people. I'm curious as to what y'all think. Make sure y'all tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Also, make sure that you get that Teach Pack, 30% off your first order plus 20% off of life. Thank you, Teach Hanley, for continuing to spot, sponsor the show. Um, also, on top of that, shout out to you guys in the chat. I love you guys. You are the greatest. And then last but not least, make sure y'all tap into After Hours tonight. Uh, absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal show last night on the Q Show. And uh, we're going to get it in. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Hopefully you find value in the things that we do. Shout out to my dog, Quentin. Shout out to Q. Shout out to everybody. Mika, that's all, all right, riding with us. And all of you guys that continue to hold me down, you guys are the greatest, greatest, greatest audience on the face of this earth. That two hours flew by, man. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Thank y'all. Let me go ahead and read a couple more Super Chats, and then I'm going to get y'all gone for the day. Got to keep a tight timeline, baby. Jacquel says, greetings and blessings. Great show last night. <laughs> Shout out to Jacquel. I appreciate you. Also, King Stannis says, I'm so glad I was born here. Thank God. Enforcer 2K9 says, yo, if Russia is so bad, why do we give them the merchant of death in exchange for a bas basketball player? Maybe Ukraine wouldn't be so outgunned. I don't know. All right. I love you guys. I appreciate y'all. Y'all are the greatest audience on earth. Thank you for all of the support and the love. I always want to read every single thing that y'all do. I don't necessarily ask for it, but I always want to acknowledge you guys. Uh, you are the greatest. I'm looking forward to seeing y'all after hours tonight. Make sure y'all hit a like on your way out the door. I got one more thing for y'all, though. Make sure you share this with your family and friends. We don't want to be successful by ourselves. I love you. I appreciate you. I love you guys. Y'all are the greatest audience ever ever in the history of YouTube live streaming and anything. You guys are awesome. Let's get to this money, man. Let's run it up. I'm going to talk to y'all later. See y'all tonight.